I'd like you to consider how is a wave born? Right, I'm gonna give you some surfer lingo to illustrate this. So you're laying on the beach on a blanket, right? And you're looking up at the sky and then you go, whoa, there's like this giant ball of fire. Our sun and it's radiating heat down onto the earth. And then that creates wind events, which might be a hurricane. <laughs> and that sends out energy, swells for thousands of miles across the ocean. Today, my talk has a similar story. My daughter, Piper, was born on October 5th, 2007. And I'll never forget the first time I looked into those beautiful little blue eyes. And I made a promise to myself that day that I would do anything and everything that I could to protect her and keep her healthy as long as I lived. I never thought it would be a question of how long she lived. By the time Piper was four years old, she was struggling. She had been in and out of the doctors on multiple rounds of antibiotics. And I can remember lying awake in the room next to hers at night, tormented by the sound of this deep, heavy, wet cough that she had. At her next doctor's appointment, it was at that time that they did a chest x-ray which revealed she had pneumonia. This not being common for a four-year-old girl, they suggested that she be tested for cystic fibrosis. Now, I had no idea what cystic fibrosis was, and many of you may not. But at that time, I kind of thought, well, this is a preliminary measure, and I blew it off. A couple weeks later, I was on my way to work when I got the call. It was Piper's mom, and she was on the phone in tears. And she said, Piper has tested positive for cystic fibrosis. And I got off the phone, and I pulled over on the side of the road. And I hung my head, and I was stunned, and I was shocked. And that quickly turned into anger and rage. And I pounded the steering wheel and I thrashed around inside the car, and mindlessly until I was just exhausted in tears. I drove to work, I parked, I went in directly to the restroom, and I looked myself in the mirror to try to clean myself up, and when I, what I was looking at was not me. It was a totally different human being. And as I walked out of the bathroom, the first coworker that I saw was a good friend of mine named Lottie. And when she looked at me, she said, Travis, what's wrong? And it was at that moment that for the first time in my life, I was so saddened and so heartbroken and devastated, I just couldn't speak. And she hugged me, and I cried in her arms. The following days and weeks and months were a roller coaster of emotions, wondering and worrying what Piper's future had in store. Now, I dove into the research and I learned a lot. I learned that cystic fibrosis is a genetic disease, which means that her mom and I gave this to her, which is incredibly difficult to accept. I would ask you, how many of you know if you're a carrier for a CF gene? I had no idea. Her mom had no idea. At the time, we didn't know that we had this in our family. There's over 1,600 vari variations of cystic fibrosis genes. The next thing I learned was that cystic fibrosis patients have to do hours of therapies every week, hundreds of, take hundreds of pills every day just to sustain their health. I learned that cystic fibrosis basically is an overproduction of mucus inside the body, and it affects the digestive system and the respiratory system. And like oil in a car, mucus in your body helps it function and run properly. But when you have an abundance of it, especially in the lungs, it creates a wet, sticky, moist environment that if a bad bacteria goes in, it can harbor and create all kinds of complications. I learned that families with patients of cystic fibrosis 
have to endure extreme financial burden at times when there's long hospitalizations, transplants, or worst case, death and burial expenses. I learned about the emotional toll that cystic fibrosis takes on the families. I learned about a father who had a 24-year-old daughter in college, and she had been battling CF her whole life, and the disease had her so weak and so fragile, and the decades of antibiotics and steroids had beat her down so much that he could barely pick her up out of bed without breaking a bone. And worst of all, I learned that cystic fibrosis is a degenerative progressive, terminal disease, and that one day it could take the life of my little girl. Now, a, a thousand thoughts can run through your mind when your child has been diagnosed with a terminal disease. One of the questions I had that was really important to me, having grown up being an athlete and being in sports, was, well, beyond the doctor's orders, beyond the therapies, what could Piper do as an activity that would really help her the most? Was it soccer? Was it swimming? What was it? Well, at her first appointment with her CF team, it was when the respiratory therapist walked in the room, really sweet girl, and we asked that question. And she said something absolutely remarkable. In the 1990s, there were CF patients in Australia that had been reporting back to their doctor with outstanding results. Their respiratory function high, was higher, their infection rate was lower. And the doctors were asking them, well, what are you doing different? And it was at that time they said, well, you know, we're like down at the beach and we're surfing every day. The light bulb went off. And those doctors and that team put years and millions of dollars into research to determine that breathing salt water through a nebulizer or surfing had a significant improvement in lung function. And the most significant thing of all is that it reduced lung exacerbations and infections by 56%, not 10%, not 20%, over 50%. I'll give you the rundown of how somebody with CF, their life works, right? So they're diagnosed. They uh, get an infection that leads to inflammation. Inflammation leads to lung uh, function decrease, which leads to transplant and ultimately death. That's it. That's their path. So if you can prevent an infection, that's amazing, right? So when they breathe salt water, it goes in. The sodium chloride, table salt, breaks down the sticky mucus in their lungs, hydrates their lungs, and helps provide airway clearance. This, for parents who are going through a time of Tremendous sadness and grief. When you're looking for any sliver of hope in the despair, this is a miracle, right? A natural, therapeutic way for Piper to heal in the surf. OK, great. Well, what does that mean? Well, we live in Florida, fantastic. Lots of beaches, great. But go out and try to hire a surf coach. This isn't t-ball. It's not soccer. OK, I didn't know how to surf at the time. So what was the next best option? Let's put Piper on a paddleboard and get out there and try to find a way to access that environment, right? It's bigger, it's wider, it's more stable. It's fun. It's nice to be out there in that environment. And it was around this time that I was meeting more people in the CF community, families, patients. And two things dawned on me. I had two realizations. One. All right, if somebody tells you that your child has been given this diagnosis and that the salt environment is the best for them, if you're in Kansas, drop your stuff and move, right? Get somewhere where you can get her out there. Well, I realized there was no paved path. There was no way for people with cystic fibrosis to access this salt environment that's so beneficial to them on a regular basis, right? Not just a one-day surf camp, but like their whole life, this should be built into. They need a passion for the ocean. This is what heals them. This is what gives them life expectancy that goes beyond what Piper is now at, which is her life expectancy with her aggressive form is late 20s to late 30s. Well, we all know that it's not about the time you have. Bob Marley was 37 years old when he passed from this planet, but his message and his music touched the world. Right? 
And at that same time, I was meeting a lot of CF families. And I, the second thing I realized was some, not all, but some families are insecure about this disease, and rightfully so. Who wants to talk about their child having a terminal disease? It's hurtful. You have to be vulnerable. It's sad. It's heartbreaking. Sometimes I can't even talk about it without just falling apart. But the thing that occurred to me was, wait, whoa. Piper, I, I don't want Piper to grow up in a world where she feels insecure. You know, as a parent, when you see these kids, you know, if, if the parents have fear, it reflects onto the child. I, didn't, I wanted Piper to define her life with this disease, not let this disease define her life. So that got me going, right? It got me thinking, like, well, what can I do? How can we put the power back in Piper's hands? What can I do to teach her that she needs to be bold in the face of fear? She can't let fear be her operating system in life. She needs love in every moment, in every day, with everybody. Because there's a sense of urgency here, right? So then an idea came to me. I'd been looking at some different magazines and paddleboarding, and I saw these guys out in Hawaii doing these long-distance crossings. And I thought, huh, that's cool. Right? And so this ties in the ocean. Well, maybe since we're here in Florida, maybe we could paddleboard from the Bahamas back to Florida. And this would be like a big, bold way, right, to show off this amazing connection to the ocean and the salt environment and the healing benefits for people with CF. But it also give Piper something that for me as a dad, just trying to do everything possible every day to give her the best life, hey, you know, if I get struck by lightning next year and I'm gone from this planet, what can I leave behind that shows Piper, don't be afraid to be who you are and put this out there. Help people with it. And so that's what we did. Our goal was to paddle 90 miles from Bimini back to West Palm Beach. We left, we headed over to Bimini, with a projection of roughly 18 to 20 hours to paddle back. It was myself and three other paddle boarders, and we had a support team of two boats and crew, and my dad, who's here today, which is awesome. And so everything was going perfect right up until we left. Right at this photo, when we shoved off the beach, this is right behind Bimini. So Bimini is sheltering kind of the ocean behind it, right, and the Gulf Stream coming up. Well, a southeast low pressure system like a mini storm, a wind event, right? Moved in, and it caused rougher seas. So this is about 10 miles offshore. This is at our pre-dark paddle, because we had to paddle overnight to make it to West Palm the next day. So as we're sitting down on the boards and we're contemplating all this, going, wow, you know, 25 mile an hour winds is tough. An amazing thing happened. The boats are sitting there, and one of the captains yells, fin, fin, fin. And we're all like, oh, yeah. You know, it's like kind of unnerving being in the ocean. And, uh, you know, you're expecting to see like a 15-foot hammerhead or, um, I don't know, a tiger shark. Instead, it was a pot of dolphins. Woohoo! Right? Like, yeah, wee, this is fun. They're like playing between us and around us. And then all of a sudden, the most incredible thing happens. One of them, right between us, just rises up out of the ocean, straight up and down, looks around at us, and then says, what the hell are you guys doing out here? Not what it said, but it's what it was thinking. And then it went back down, and we all were blown away. Of course, the camera guy in the boat was changing his battery, so he missed it, but we'll all remember it forever. So we paddled, and we paddled, and we paddled. And as we got out there, the ocean went from three to four, manageable, four to six, oh boy, six to eight foot swells in the middle of the Gulf Stream. And so here we are paddling at night. We're falling off the boards. We're becoming hypothermic from losing body heat, shivering. Our crew on the boats were seasick. We had vertigo from the bubble of light from behind the boats. And here we are. It's 3 AM in the pitch black of the Gulf Stream under a blanket of a billion stars in the Milky Way. And I'm down on my knees paddling, right? And I'm thinking, oh, damn, that dolphin was right. What are we doing out here? What did I get these people into? And it was at that moment that one of our paddlers yelled, lighthouse. All right, I grew up in Florida. I've been around beaches and lighthouses my whole life. 
I had no idea what a lighthouse as a beacon of hope meant until that moment, all right? Because when we saw that beam go whoo, across the horizon, it was like, hallelujah, right? Like, we're going to make it. And we did. The next morning, the sun rose up, and we kept paddling, and we kept paddling. And eventually, we made it right into Palm Beach Inlet to a celebratory crowd of friends and family. And it was a big success, right? We raised $15,000. We had a ton of media coverage. And one thing that was interesting was that the media coined this name, Piper's Angels, right, for our paddlers and our crew. Now, I have to ask you a real question here. Who is the real angel? Piper is. All of this came together because of her. Last year, Piper was in the hospital for two months, once for two weeks in the spring and six weeks over the summer. She went into the hospital, an eight-year-old girl with a pretty normal lifestyle. She came out of the hospital with a permanent feeding tube, a long-term IV that goes directly into her heart, and an 18-month protocol for antibiotics and steroids to try to knock back a bacteria that's colonized in her lungs. So the fight must continue. And today, I'm very proud to say that the Crossing for a Cure has over 30 registered paddle boarders. We're on our way to $50,000 in fundraising. And in June, we're going to paddle again. We've created the Piper's Angels Foundation to help empower people in the CF community, but more so to develop the world's largest ocean-based activities program for CFers to participate in saltwater activities, thus giving them a chance to extend their life. And guess what? We have a cure, all right? We're on the path to it. I fully believe that. I have absolute faith. But we need to give every one of those CFers an opportunity to see that day. So if you can prevent one infection and extend their life just a little bit, you might get it just out there far enough that they see the day that cure comes. There's Piper surfing her first wave in Costa Rica at a surf camp. Now, we started today in this talk by talking about and me asking you, how is the wave born? Right? You got this like, big ball of fire in the sky, it heats up the earth, generates a wind event that sends out a swell thousands of miles across the ocean, and then there you are, sitting in the lineup, patiently watching and waiting, and here, here it comes. Right? And as it gets to the beach, it rises up into one of the most beautiful natural formations Mother Nature has to offer. And you can see that guy in the background. What is he doing? He just paddle paddled, dropped into the shoulder of that wave, and turned to go down the line. And what is he doing? He's riding that wave. But what is he really doing? He's connecting with that energy that started out there. And it came all the way to that beach. And he's riding the triumphant finale of the life of that wave before it hits the beach and disperses, right? Piper is my sun. She is my star. She is my source of energy, of power, of inspiration. The lesson to be learned here is that as humans, we are all just a reflection of what's within. And after years after Piper's diagnosis and going through all this, producing this crossing for a cure, paddling across the ocean, creating the Piper's Angels Foundation, what I learned is really valuable in how you cope, which is that no matter what wind event, storm, or ocean conditions is happening in your life, whether no matter what the adversity is or what you're facing, which could be a great loss, or a devastating diagnosis. The key is that you have to take that energy source, that power, that event, and you have to transform it and all that pain and suffering, transform it into the ride of a lifetime. Because you only get one shot here. You have to be bold in the face of fear because if you are, you don't need a cure to find healing. By being bold, you don't need a cure to heal. 
Thank you guys very much.